Hello, good morning and welcome to our online service this Sunday. It's wonderful to have you with us. Shall we start with these opening sentences? O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Uh, so before we come to a time of worship, let's just quiet our hearts as we come to a place of confession. So let's come before the Lord and say together, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are ashamed and we are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. And so, Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. So now let's sing this wonderful hymn of praise together. Praise my soul. And now the Collect, the Church's special prayer for this week. Almighty God, in whose service lies perfect freedom, teach us to obey you with loving hearts and steadfast wills, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have a Bible reading, followed by a talk in a very special location uh, from our Vicar Yan. Our first reading today is from Genesis, chapter 1, verses 24 to 31. And God said, 
Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. The livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every, every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has a breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that all he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 25. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, hello everyone and welcome to a, a special little benefice service sermon, um, which uh, I'm bringing all the way from French and Pont. Yeah, all right, that was a bad joke. It's not French and Pont, I'm in Cornwall at the moment. But, I mean, just look at what's behind me. It is absolutely stunning. Isn't creation just so extraordinary and amazing? Uh, I mean, the, 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 the landscape here, or I should say the seascape, has changed about a hundred times in the last 10 minutes as the clouds have been going across. We've had rainbows, we've had rain. The, the, the color of the sea has gone from gray to greeny blue to turquoise to, uh, it's just stunning. Earlier this morning, I was, I was watching a seal swimming in the sea and just, just effortlessly gliding under the waves. It was just mesmerizing. We live in such an extraordinary and beautiful planet. We are so, so, so blessed. And today is the first day of a two-week conference in Glasgow. It's the United Nations Climate Change Conference, otherwise known as COP26. It made me think, well, hang on a minute. How should Christians approach climate change? How should Christians approach um, uh, uh, things such as uh, uh, these climate change conferences, global warming, uh, the rising of sea levels. How should we view these things? And the reality is that we view things from different points of view. So many of us might approach this scientifically. Now the problem with uh, global weather systems uh, going over years and years and years is that it's really, 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 really complex. And of course, 
television and, and, and scientists on, on television try and make it simpler so we can all understand what's going on. But the reality is that there's an awful lot of science, which is way, way beyond what I can understand because I'm not a PhD in global weather systems. I don't know enough about it. So I have to go on trust that the scientists that we, we hear and that we see and who, who publish their research and deliver it on national television, etc., know what they're talking about. Now, obviously, there are differences amongst them, and so people can come to different views about what we should do about global warming, for instance, and whether it's caused by humans or not. Now, the prevailing view is that it is, and the prevailing view is that we have to do something about our carbon footprints. But for the Christian, well, there'll be some Christians who don't necessarily go for that because from their scientific kind of evaluation uh, of, of, of the evidence, they're not convinced. Whilst, of course, many others will be convinced. And I don't really want to get into the science today. We don't have time and I don't have the expertise. So I'm just going to put that to one side. The other way that people think about global warming is uh, to look at it politically. And I know that for, for many, the idea that uh, uh, we're going to really have to change, we're going to have to stop using um, uh, fossil fuels in the way that we have been using them over the last century, uh, you know, is, is actually a, an impingement on people's individual freedoms. So some people object to some of the changes that are being, uh, 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 that, that, that are being encouraged uh, by environmentalists on those sort of grounds. And... Again, as Christians, we'll all have different views. We have Christians who are Greens. We have Christians who are on the right, on the left. We have Christians who come at this issue from lots of different political stances. And, yep, I'm going to part that one on the side as well. What I want us to think about, and you won't be surprised by this, because I am a vicar after all, is I want us to have a theological response to environmentalism. And that, for me, is obviously key. That's the beginnings of how we should respond to anything. What do we know about God? Is there anything in Scripture that's going to help us when we think about the environment and when we think about how we can best safeguard our planet? And, of course, the answer is yes, of course, there is. Because we had in our first reading from Genesis 1, literally the, the, the first thing, the first recorded words of God to humankind. He says, go and be fruitful. Go and be fruitful. And then he says something extraordinary. He says, subdue the earth, rule over the earth, have dominion over the earth. Now, when I hear the word subdue or rule or dominion, that can sound rather negative. But of course, in the same way that God is a ruler and a king of kings who is intrinsically good. He is the very source of love. Well, I don't think he'd want us to rule in any other way. So when we read about having dominion over the earth, I think all God is asking us is to continue the work that he begins at creation. And you will notice something about creation. Every time something is created, there's that line, and it was good and it was good, and it was good, and it was good. And of course, we don't have any problems understanding that. I mean, look at it. It, it really is very good, what's being created. It's, it's stunning, and it's beautiful, and it's inspiring. You don't even have to believe in God to be inspired by the beauty of creation. One of God's first commandments to you and me is to rule, to have dominion, to have authority. In other words, to be stewards of his beautiful creation. To continue the work that he began, which was all about fruitfulness, which is all about diversity, which is all about life thriving in all its forms. So to be an environmentalist really is actually at the center of what it means to be God's people, what it means to be human, in fact. We should care for our planet. And from a theological point of view, 
it seems to me that that is just so obvious. Now, of course, there is a difference between caring for creation and bowing down to creation. Creation shouts. I mean, it really does. It, it speaks of God, doesn't it? It's so glorious and beautiful and wonderful. It, 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 it exclaims, and again, 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 in Scripture, we have all these verses, we have, we have so many Psalms that talk about how, how creation displays the splendor of God. You know, through creation, somehow we're aware that we're not just a bunch of chemicals. There's more to life than that because, just because, look, it just speaks of God. But it points towards God. We worship God, not creation. Does that make sense? And the same way that Jesus says, you, you are the light of the world. It's not, we're not the light of the world so we can be worshipped. We're the light of the world in the sense that we reflect God's light. And so that as people see the people of God and how they behave towards an, uh, one another, or certainly meant to behave towards one another, they find God. And it's the same for, with creation. Now, occasionally, and I have been at conferences where this sort of thing's been said, I've heard people say, ah, oh, yeah, but it says in the Bible it's going to be a new heaven, new earth. So who cares? And I'm really sorry, but that's just a rubbish argument. That is a totally pants argument, isn't it? Our second reading was from Romans, where Paul writes that all of creation is groaning, waiting for the sons of glory to come into authority, for Jesus to gather all things unto himself. So that why? So that creation can be destroyed? No. So that creation can be made new and renewed. You know, our bodies are going to die and we're going to be buried, and some of us will get cremated. You know, our bodies' existence are finite, aren't they? And yet, we hope for a new body that will be eternal. Now, what does that tell us? Does that mean that we shouldn't care for our own bodies or other people? We shouldn't care about other people's physical needs because, well, don't worry, you'll have a new body one day. Is that our response to people who are suffering? Well, of of course it isn't. It's utter baloney. It would be ridiculous to have that attitude. And so it's the same with this planet. I don't really know or understand exactly what a new heaven and a new earth, what, what that will look like or what it'll feel like. But I do know this, that right now, my job, my calling as a human being, and of course, as a Christian, is to care for the planet. So whatever your view is on global warming, whatever you think the solutions are, one thing we should all be agreed on, whatever our politics, whatever our scientific background or points of view, is that we need, it is of paramount uh, importance that we look after creation. And I really believe that if we do that in faith, if we do that in sincerity and earnestly, God will honour whatever it is that we do and however we do it. So the question at the end of today is really this. Are we, are you and I, working for the benefit of this planet, of the environment, of nature, of creation, to the best of our ability? Because that is our calling. A prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of this world and um, the, the, the privilege of being called to tend for it, to look after it, to steward it. So would you help us and guide us? Would you especially help and guide uh, those who are gathering for that conference up in Glasgow, even today? May your Holy Spirit blow through that conference and uh, may your Holy Spirit inspire all those who have influence globally to make a difference. All those who have influence to, to help this planet thrive. And remind us of our personal responsibilities too, towards how we should treat this planet, that you might be glorified. In Jesus' name, Amen. That's all for today. See you again soon.
Thank you, Jan. Uh, we're now going to turn ourselves to prayer as Ian Black leads us. Joining together in the company of the faithful, let us offer up our prayers to the throne of grace. Heavenly and merciful God, you are the source of all that is good and all that is holy. We offer you our prayers for your church here on earth. Strengthen your servants, Lord, that in these days we shall remain faithful witnesses and bearers of the good news of your beloved Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray especially for our brothers and sisters in countries facing oppression and who suffer for their faith. May your strong arm uphold them in their trials. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, as we gather together, we pray especially for our benefice as we approach reorganisation and also for our diocese as both face an interregnum. Grant wisdom and courage, Lord, to those tasked with choosing faithful pastors of their flock. We also give thanks for those who lead and minister to us. We especially remember today Jan and Hannah, and we ask you to be with them as they prepare for their move to Headley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, you created the heavens and the earth and saw that it was good, and you tasked us with the care of the earth. Mindful of our responsibilities, let us pray for wisdom and courage among world leaders as they gather in Glasgow for the COP26 summit. We pray that they may seek the common good for the earth and for our future generations. We also pray that we too may play our part. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, as your beloved son prayed, we too pray that your kingdom may come and that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for justice and righteousness here on earth. We pray for all in responsibility here on earth to guard the poor and oppressed and to pursue the ways of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we remember in our prayers today all who are distressed, those who suffer private torments, those who have lost loved ones, those rendered homeless, and all who suffer physically or mentally. We pray urgently that wars may cease, that grudges and hatreds should be quenched. Remembering today especially the situation in Sudan, the Congo and Myanmar. We pray that your strong arm should uphold all those who can help them and that we should actively play our part in their support. We pray that your light may break into their lives and that this light may be a foretaste of the glorious light we all seek at the dawn of your coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today is All Saints Day when we commemorate and give thanks for all the faithful who have gone before us and are now heirs of your eternal rest. Let us join together our praises and prayers with theirs that when our race is run, we, like them, may rest in peace. And then, on that great day when all things shall be made new, we shall rise again to see the earth and each other in your glorious presence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us now pray together in the words our Lord has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
And so a final prayer of blessing. Lord Jesus Christ, send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts and bring glory to your name. Amen. So now we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful week. It's been great having you with us. And make sure you stay around for all the notice slides uh, at the end. Have a good week. See you soon.